Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. A gracious welcome to you all on the third round of the very first inter-school English debate competition organized by Bangladesh Television Short Program Center. For good ideas and true innovation, we all need human interaction, conflict, and arguments. Even though conflicts and arguments have been looked upon as negative activities, debate is that one place where they all come together and form it into a positive formal method of interaction to come to a conclusion for an argument. Since as human beings we are all different and we all have differences of opinion and different ways of looking at the same topic, however, debate and divergence of views can only enrich our culture and history. Dear audience, I'm currently surrounded by some of the smart speakers out there who hopefully will be presenting their opinions with logic and reasoning. And on that very good note, I, your host, Prapunti Chakraborty, would love to invite you all to come along and enjoy our very lively debate competition participated by two competed teams. Today, the selected motion for the debate competition is, education technology companies can replace traditional educational institutions. The team for the motion belongs to Rani Bilashmoni Government High School, Ghazipur. The team against the motion belongs to Chartogram Cantonment Public College. Speakers for the motion are Abir Hassan Mugtho, Mohammed Shakil Chaudhuri, Shomitra Sinha. Speakers against the motion are Mohammed Safan bin Hussain Chaudhuri, Fairuz Tafanum, Abra Shohid. The honorable adjudicators of today's session are Zafur Shadik, Senior News Presenter, Shomoy Television, Joyce Sri Dash, Associate Professor, Department of Pharmacy, University of Science and Technology, Chaturgram. Junaid Ahmed Chaudhuri, Deputy Manager, HR Division, BRAC. The topics on which our honorable judges are going to assign marks in the constructive round are Presentation 5, Language and Pronunciation 10, Presentation of Theory and Information 15, Argumentation and Rebuttal 10. The topics on which our honorable judges are going to assign marks in the rebuttal round are Presentation 5, Language and Pronunciation 5, Argumentation and Rebuttal 20. Dear viewers, now we're going to introduce our honorable moderator of today's program who will be conducting the entire competition and announce the results at the end. The honorable moderator of today's competition is Professor ABM Abu Noman, Department of Law, University of Chittagong. Now, I would most humbly like to request you, sir, to come up on the stage and take your seat. Before we start the debate, I would like to inform you about the time and order of each debater. Each debater will get five minutes to present his or her speech. An alarming bell will ring on the fourth minute and the final bell will ring on the fifth minute. In the rebuttal round, both the team leaders will get two minutes each. Alarming bell will ring on one and a half minute and the final bell will ring on the second minute. Before we get on to the competition, I would like to inform you again that from now onwards, you can not only watch our episodes on your television set, but also on Facebook and YouTube. Tune in on facebook.com slash btvchartogram and www.youtube.com slash at the rate btvchartogram. Now, I would like to request our honorable moderator to preside over the competition and start the debate. Thank you so much. Dear audience, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon to you all. This is my proud privilege and immense pleasure to here to play the role as a moderator in the particular session of the third round of the inter school English debate competition organized by the Bangladesh Television Chattogram Center. Dear audience, 
Today, the selective motion of the debate competition is education technology companies can replace traditional educational institution. I sincerely believe the topic is very interesting and which is also very relevant and timely of this today's context. The team for the motion belongs to Rani Bilashmuni Government High School, Gajipur, and the team against the motion belongs to Chattogram Cantonment Public College. This debate competition divided into two rounds. The first one, the constructive round, and the second one is the revital round. Let's start the constructive round. I am now calling on the stage Abir Hossain Mugdho, the first debater of the Rani Bilashmoni Government High School, Gajipur, to deliver his speech for the motion. A student goes to school or college with high per perspective, but all his dream gets broken by the bragging or bullying by his mates, seniors, or outsiders. Around 5,000 students are being bullied every day in the world. Search unirag.net. And for fear of this racking or bullying, students are becoming afraid of schools and colleges. Even many students are not going. In such a situation, not only the traditional educational institutions, but to save the country's educational development, various online educational institutions, such as 10-minute school or Shiko, are needed, so that students can learn from any place of their choice without fear. Thank you so much, Honorable Moderator, for giving me the floor. Today's selected evening topic is education technology companions can replace traditional educational institutions. For some logical causes, me and my team want to establish our statement in favor of the motion. Now I'm here to express my opinion for the motion. Honorable moderator, if we discuss this topic, then we must know what is educational technology and what is traditional educational institutions. You know, educational technology is the field of study that investigates the progress of analyzing, designing, de developing, and the learning process in order to improve teaching and learning. And traditional education is defined as teacher-centered delivery of instruction to classes of students who are the receivers of information. In today's debate, we will prove with five arguments that education technology companions can replace traditional educational institutions. Number one, global collaboration and networking. Number two, flexibility, convenience, and personalization. Number three, lifelong learning and skill development. Number four, rich multimedia con content. And number five, cost efficiency. From our opinion, global collaboration and networking is the first and foremost. Honorable moderator, by my first argument, I'm referring online platforms can connect students and educators worldwide for starting cross-cultural communication and collaboration, which is increasingly important in our globalized world. Also, students can collaborate on projects, share ideas, and gain exposure on projects. Using British Council Online School, we collaborate our work with the students of different countries of the world. You can start and can, you, can, you will enjoy the benefit. Let us know the history. Online education system is not only started during COVID-19. Online education started in 1993 and was done very well, and it was accepted as legal education in the same year. The most important one is a student can build confidence towards communication, which is never possible in traditional educational institutions. Number two, flexibility, convenience, and personalization. Online learning for educational technology platforms allows students to learn at their own pace and according to their schedules. This flexibility is especially beneficial for individuals with other commitments, such as work or family responsibilities, and also allows for personalized learning experience. Education technology platforms have the potential to reach a much larger audience, including remote and underserved areas where establishing traditional educational institutions might be challenging. Look at the current social picture. We have taken education to a unicaid, right? If any of our relatives says that his son has got GPA 5, then our guardian with others pressure to get GPA 5. And also getting GPA 5 is the only perspective of parents. The frustration of the students will increase. Search Bangladesh News 24. Director of primary education says 6,300 primary schools in the country do not have head teachers. And since there is no head teachers, as a result, the teachers there are not taking classes regularly. At present, 80% of subjects are memorized by students from traditional educational institutions through various notes. As a result, 
they may be getting GPA 5, but they can't realizing anything. Our beloved and honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina's digital Bangladesh, which is no longer a dream but has become a reality and is, be and is working towards becoming a smart Bangladesh. Currently in the new education program for six and seven classes, the education minister has successfully mentioned that the network is for learning. Bangladesh University Grants Commission Chairman Kaji Shwaidullah said that online education has become important for us in every situation like COVID-19. The Prime Minister said we have to continue our online education because Corona is sometimes increasing, sometimes decreasing. What we have observed all along this winter, we are not talking about closing traditional educational institutions. However, if traditional educational institutions have various problems, replace them with improved educational technological systems. Now, I have a question for the opponents. If the online education did not play any role in the field of education, then why is the government taking various initiati initiatives towards in the online education system? The government provides funds for various computer clubs, including Sheikh Rafa Digital Club. The government wants to replace traditional educational institutions with online education technology companions. Even many initiatives have already been taken. Honorable moderator, as the first speaker of the group, I have defined the topic. The second speaker in my team will analyze the information on the topic, and my team leader will be coordinating the topic. Thank you, Honorable Moreto. Thanks to all of you. Now I am calling up on stage Mohammed Safwan bin Hossain Choudhury, the first debater of the Chattogram Cantonment Public College, to deliver his speech against the motion. Students are not just certificate holders, they are not just graduates, but they are the future, and this future can never be judged by the marks on the exam paper. That cannot be judged just by academic excellence. Thank you, no monitor, for giving me the floor. Going for the basic rebuttal in the very first place. When they talk about bullying, we see that 84% of the teens face cyberbullying in online on the speaker. On that particular perspective, we believe our side of the world is exclusive. Why? Because we have supervision, we have punishment system. On that particular perspective, we as in institutions have this accountability among the students that even if you bully another child you have to be accountable to the authority on the honorable moderator that is to say on the other hand when we talk about cyber bullying there is no accountability there is no supervision and thus we believe that online bullying is much more worse on honorable speaker they have talked about how online education was brought in 1993 the question remains why has it not still been in the mainstream or has never been invaded by the online education why still the institution in the very first place almost speaker they have talked about flexible timing we believe that it is very unfortunate how they keep how students keep procrastinating and that particular flexible time never comes in the very first place those courses remains those timing remains but they are not indulging in taking the education in the very first place when they talk about global collaboration we see that there, there are MIT courses which are very empty now coming to the point the opposition couldn't have a clear ground in the very first place so let us broaden our minds no one thing that both edtech companies and traditional education and institutions have the same target audiences the students now that is to say this is the main stakeholders of today's debate we are to enhance the understanding of the stakeholders we have to identify two factors. Number one, how the student term can never be generalized. No one thing that this student term can never be put in a single umbrella term. This, the characteristic of students varies from different age groups. For example, there are toddlers who go to kindergartens, there are teens who go to high schools, and there are young adults who go to universities. We believe they are distinctly different from each other and have their own characteristics. And number two factor is this different set of groups have their di different requirements, have their different learning needs, and they are not only seeking for the academic excellence, some seek for attention, some seek for personalized learning, home speaker. That is to say, we believe that our incentive is to bring overall development of the students of different spectrums and prepare them for the future challenges. We will show you at the end of the debate how traditional uh, educational institutions caters about these groups and provide distinct learning experiences or environment depending on them. Now, where do we stand in the first place? We as a team are not denying edtech companies can help in academic aspects, but we but what we are trying to prove is it cannot ever replace traditional educational institutions in any of the aspects of the To prove our stance, we have three particular arguments. Number one, institutions help in holistic development and social skills. Number two, education and technology is more destructive than beneficial. Number three, traditional educational institutions provide education with better utilities. I, as the first speaker, will explain the first point. Uh, my second speaker will explain the second point, And my third speaker will explain the third point and some of the whole debate. Now, talking about the first argument, we have to 
understand one thing the education is not just about injecting information of books it's about personal development it's about human values we believe that this is received from traditional educational institutions a research in university of california showed that institutions enhances human values even better than families themselves on the speaker we believe that traditional education have these particular utilities to develop the holistic uh, holistic mindset on the speaker now we have four mechanism number one traditional institutions play a role in imparting cultural, ethical, and moral values to students. No one thing, the moment in time we celebrate national days, the moment in time we celebrate certain festivals, this upholds the cult uh, culture and creates a sense of patriotism among the students. On the other hand, when we talk about education tech companies, these particular, are, these particular companies are only based on academic excellence and do not uh, create a sense of patriotism and thus, we believe that our side of the world is exclusive. And on the other hand, we see teachers teaching us moral values like honesty, respect, and etc. etc. And number two mechanism is these institutions create practical skills like punctuality, discipline, etc. Well, we have to follow certain etiquettes and rules which we create sense of discipline in the institution. On the speaker. On the other hand, we see there are certain indisciplined activities going on online on the speaker. There is no supervision, there is no accountability. On that particular spec, we believe discipline is a fundamental spec that is created through institutions, not by tech companies. And secondly, we see how we have to reach schools on time, which creates punctuality as well. Now, talking about the third uh, perspective that is institutions promote social interaction with friends and family uh, teachers now uh, this creates number one social skills number two teamwork number three collaboration no one thing the moment in time you collaborate with someone the moment in time you interact with your own classmate or pupil this in turn creates social skills this in turn creates your uh, social agent skills on the speaker that is to say we as the gov uh, as uh, institution traditional educational institutions provide them with utilities to help help them with socialization skills on the speaker that is to say it tech companies do not have the facilities to interact face to face. So uh, coming to the fourth point that says institution provides physical education as well. This physical education helps in the physical development and health development of institutions. Thus we believe the impact of institutions has number one provides mental and physical health and number two it can enhance the mentality of individuals and thus we believe uh, it tech companies can never ever replace traditional education institutions. Thank you Omar Moderator. Thank you everyone. Now I am asking the second speaker for the motion. Mohammad Shakil Choudhury from the Rani Bilashmoni Government High School, Gajipur, to put up his speech for the motion. Thank you, honorable and talented moderator, for giving me the floor. First, I will start elaborating my arguments, and then I will rebut our land upon team. The first speaker of my team presented two arguments in favor of the motion. Now, I am going to extend three more arguments to prove that education technology companies can replace traditional educational institutions easily and incredibly. My first argument is lifelong learning skill and development. Honorable moderator, if we observe, we will be clear that traditional educational institutions are not able to play an effective role in our continuous skill development due to the students and teacher ratio. Internationally, the ratio is 30 is to 1, while in Bangladesh, it varies from 53 is to 1, 89 is to 1, or about 90 is to 1. Source, News 24, 20, 2022. Now, at this time, EdTech is more situable and the effective for our upskilling, which continuously improves our skills. According to the annual EdTech report 2023, 53.7% of youth are taking a training of various technical professions through educational technology companies. As educational companies are open source for 24 by 7, the people of Bangladesh found them available and can continue at their comfortable time and acquire lifelong learning skill, which is not possible properly in traditional educational institutions. Moreover, we see that traditional educational institutions can provide us with leadership training, HR development skill, and lifetime switchable skills. You know, it provides us only theoretical knowledge. I don't, it don't provide any research training. As a result, even if the students only acquire skills in the classroom without a glimpse of practical application skills that generates nothing but unemployment problems. Honorable moderator, but according to the annual EdTech report 2022, about 88% of the trainees trained by various education technology companies such as Shiko, Bohubrihi, Trainments School, etc., have been providing skilled based education and employment accordingly. Honorable moderator, our opponents will agree that not only individuals but also a whole community can get access with the relevant courses and trainings to be skilled and 
to switch their choice of career fields as well. So let's speak together. Online educational institutions like EdTech is well suited for continuous skill development and upskilling, not the traditional. So my learned opponent do agree with us that the near future, this education technology companies can uh, replace traditional educational institutions. Let's explain my argument number two, rich and current contents. Honorable moderator, it is important to always stay updated in the field of education. But nowadays, it is often seen that some information is not updated on the textbooks, which is one of the problems in quality education. For example, since 2012, we have been reading that the total population of Bangladesh is about 15 crores. This information has not changed in the textbooks even in the last 11 years, while the population of Bangladesh is continues to go 18 crores. So can you deny? Traditional educational institutions and curriculum may not keep up huge problem for students, latest knowledge gaining. But edtech platforms can update content faster than the uh, traditional educational informations. Doesn't it clear that edtech platforms ensures learners opportunity with current and relevant informations? Due to this, students can always move to the right direction and prove their skills on the current competitive era. Moreover, edtech platforms can make learning engagements with multimedia technologies such as videos, animations, and whatnot. Through this, education is more lively and long-lasting, isn't it? Finally, think for cost efficiency. Honorable moderator, at present, 68.34% of the total population of the country live in villages. Most of the families are not economically strong to attend school as well as buy the reference books by for the desired results. Moreover, most of the teachers are not in the modern modern position and they are tertiary level cannot be updated without textbooks while the textbooks are backdated dear opponents agree with us that online only at the edtech platforms such as shiko bohubrihi tenments school and others are offering the opportunities we like with a minimal cost the low cost platforms are providing quality education with the low cost internet data, which is very effective and easy to all and ensure the desired education through good quality teachers from anywhere in the world. Dear opponents, if online platforms are so inferior, then why is government working towards them? And mention, which is mentioned by my first speaker. And why aren't you are answering our question? Conclude with me that educational technology can Companies can replace traditional educational in institutions easily and incredibly. Thank you, Honorable Moderator. Thank you, everyone. Now I am calling upon the stage the second speaker against the motion, Firus Tafannum uh, from Chattogram Cantonment Public College to put up her speech against the motion. Studying in a country where 61.4% of the students are addicted to the device, it wouldn't it be principally unjustified to get them more involved with technology? Thank you, Honorable Moderator, for giving me a chance to speak up into this argument. Today, the motion we're going to argue with is that uh, educational technology companies like Shiko Tenmid School can replace traditional education institutions. And today, we'll be standing opposing the motion. First of all, going for the basic rebuttals. First of all, they are glorifying e-tech, which is actually connected with the deadlocks. Second of all, we are not questioning the existing education system today. Rather, we are talking about how the situation will be if uh, edu um, online education technologies can actually replace the education institutions existing. Also, um, if the students that we talked about affordability, right, if the students that does not have the power to actually move to another state to actually go to the classes, why would they do the, why would they give exams in the first place? Now coming to my um, basic points honorable speaker look at how traditional institutions are not only about books it's about learning how to be a real human being in the real world honorable speaker because not only it teaches you academic knowledge but also social norms values socialization which uh, which an um, a tech company cannot teach you um, focus on how uh, my first speaker has already talked about how holistic development works. It develops both physically, mentally, uh, students how to be a real human being in the real world. But that cannot be done in uh, tech-based education companies. Because, honorable speaker, they have some objectives. What are their objectives? First, to provide materials, take exams, and furthermore. At the end of the day, they're limited to education and education only. They don't even play a slight role in providing actual uh, education, actual social norms that are going to help the people out there for the actual world, honorable speaker. Because we believe 
walking in real life, it's much more harder than turning off your screen, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, look at how our government has already taken initiative for a new curriculum which only focuses on students getting practical education and real life um, implementation based education. And in this case, we believe these, uh, these uh, ed tech companies actually won't be any help because can you teach practical education through a screen? And when the new curriculum will actually concure the whole place, what will these companies will uh, help? How will these companies will help us? Um, speaker, look at how we're standing in a country where 20% people live below the poverty line. And, uh, and, these, uh, um, and uh, from these people, 12.7 families can't even afford a single mobile phone. And if they had to afford a single mobile phone, 43.90% of the students' families would fall victim to poverty, which goes up to our second point, which is education and technology is more harmful than benefic beneficial. Um, speaker, look at how by three factors, I'll be showing you how tech-based education is hampering students rather than helping them. First is addiction, second one is health, third one is distraction. All the speaker look at how the least thing a parent would want right now is the children to get more attached to technology because it is seen that 30.4% of the students are actually addicted to their phones and the rate has been increased by 31% making it 61.4% because of the pandemic online class situation. We all agree that students engage and deal with technology much more differently now, th uh, now than they used to before. By exploring new loopholes and different websites, they're getting more and more attracted to technology, which makes them more prone to get addicted to it. Uh, but speaker, look at how some uh, reports state that uh, the eight hours of school actually is the more sufficient time that keeps students away from technology. And if that eight hour is itself uh, replaced with technology, Focus on how big of a downfall it will create for the students. Focus on how bad situation the students would fall into. Um, but speaker, look at how not only will it make people addicted, it will also create distraction in studies. How um, but speaker, in the pandemic situation, what we saw is that when we were doing online classes, we are going through different sort of tabs, we are going to different sort of websites. We learned about different sort of binge watching Netflix and whatever that was, and we actually was exploring different loopholes. And by exploring different loopholes, we couldn't even focus on the classes. That that were taken by our teachers because there's no supervision, there's no monitoring of are we going to do that? Are we doing these classes exactly? Because we believe there's always going to be a certain number of people who won't get the most out of these online classes because they have that sort of mentality. What are we going to do with those people out there? Uh, the speaker, look at how in an article of the research gate, they stated that 85% of the students experience mental health issues uh, with reports of anxiety and depression doubling. 75% uh, lost interest in study because of the pandemic situation of online classes. and after being homeschooled for two years, many students can't even deal with their own classmates. Why, honorable speaker? Because they were lack, they were lacking socialization skills. Honorable speaker, look at how at the end of the day, we are not saying that there isn't a place for technology in our classroom. But now that we have seen the online-based education system, the the connections, the emotions, and so on, uh, so on cannot be overstated because we believe truly learning is not just about learning contents and books and just uh, memorizing stuff. We believe it's the interactions, it's the communication that solidify that learning. It's the feeling of being around people, it's the feeling of being around in community that makes the student learn about themselves, learn about the world, and learn about other peoples around them. At the end of the day, content in human vacuum can't sustain itself, honorable speaker. And today, I hope this parliament, uh, this house actually accepts this proposal. Thank you, honorable speaker. Thank you, everyone. Dear audience, now it is time for the team leaders. The first team leader will be speaking for the motion. Now I am calling upon the stage, Shomitra Shingha, the team leader of the Rani Bilash Government High School, Gajipur, to deliver his speech for the motion. Thank you, Honorable Moderator, Panel of Judges, for giving me the gracious mandate to speak today before the venerated house. We're having a heated debate, are we not? With some very interesting things being said. The motion of today's debate is, education technology companies can replace traditional educational institutions. We've all hitherto been in utter embarrassment, witnessing astonishing claims, a mixture of just cherry-picked Quotes, misrepresentation, misinterpretation, selectively self-serving infos with vacuum-sealed logic, and a farrago of distortions. Whereas our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina herself, urged UNESCO to declare online education and public learning as a global public good. Source, The Daily Star, 11 November 2022. So, I beseech you to join me on this rhetorical verge, where the currents of logic will take us to the shores of enlightenment. The first speaker of my team upheld global collaboration of edtech, personalized learning, 
cost efficiency and the convenience of technology. And the second speaker of my team highlighted importance of technology in education, flexibility, stagnation of education during calamities, and guess what? Technology as the savior. I, as the team leader, will be clarifying facts about innovative capabilities, scalability, real world experience, and learning beyond textbooks. So let the facts be unsheathed. First argument, innovative capabilities. EdTech companies bring cutting edge technologies such as artificial intelligence, virtual reality, machine learning, etc. For instance, artificial intelligence and virtual reality can simulate real world explanations and scenarios, enabling ways for us to explore concepts in ways that were previously unimaginable. EdTech has not only revamped the way classrooms operate, but also created digital classroom. So technically, teachers are not detached from students, as mentioned by the opposition team. Although, second argument, scalability. EdTech companies can be scaled to accommodate a large number of students without the extensive need for physical infrastructure. According to Education Household Survey of Bangladesh 2020, Bangladeshi students spent one third of their educational cost and budget on either coaching center, house tutor, or committing. Why is it so? So the cost associated with committing gets totally eliminated. 10 minute school has already covered textbook contents of class 1 to 12 through its video tutorials for absolutely free of cost, which has 10 million followers. How is it so? Besides, it has courses on IELTS, TOEFL, Python, JavaScript, University Test, GRE, and what not, which are not included in traditional educational institutions, although they have real life application. About online education, I want to reply that EdTech Shika alone has 20,000 videos and 50,000 quizzes. As a result, students are to re-evaluate their lessons through multimedia instigation instead of immersing themselves in social media and online games. Anyways, had education technology not created a vicissitude, a maelstrom of EdTech revolution, then sagacious opponents. Why are EdTechs more prevalent than traditional educational institutions? If we look at our neighboring country, India, EdTechs like Baiju's Academia contribute 110 to 117 billion dollars. 10 minute school is installed more than 1 million times. Upskill, interactive care, Shiko, 10 minute school, Bohubrihi contribute 3 to 10 billion dollars. How is it so? Question remains, please answer. Even more surprisingly, interactive care has military courses for ISSB exam for the armed forces of Bangladesh. How are educa traditional educational institutions better when they don't have courses on coding, robotics, graphics designing, whereas edtechs have? Question remains. Third argument, networking and global recognition. My omniscient opponents are flabbergasting everyone with flamboyant figments which has no translucency whatsoever. In 2009, Bangladesh government itself legalized interactive care and other kinds of ed techs. Bangladesh Youth Leadership Center funded interactive care for better acceleration. Ayman Sadiq, the founder of 10 Minute School and an entrepreneur, was given Queen's Young Leaders Hours in 2008 by none other than Finish the sentence, the late Queen Elizabeth II. So why is the opposition to be fuddlingly opposing ethics when they are globally recognized? Question remains. While online and traditional platforms together play a crucial role in shaping our country, it's also evident that education technology companies possesses the potential to revolutionize the way we see and the way we learn. The innovative capabilities, personalized learning experience, cost effectiveness, and global networking opportunities position them as strong contenders to replace traditional educational institutions. So it is essential to harness the power to create a more inclusive educational system rather than denying. So helplessly hoping for the answers, I'd like to conclude. Thank you, honorable moderator. Thank you, panel judges. Now I am calling upon the stage Abra Shohit, the team leader of the Chattogram Cantonment Public College to deliver his speech against the motion. Standing in a country where traditional education institution shapes a student into an ideal human being, having a strong moral, mental, and physical grounds 
compared to just providing education, it is principally unjustified to replace it with edtech companies, starting with some basic rebuttals. Honorable Speaker, and some basic questions. First of all, my first question to the opposition bench is when they are talking about the government is enforcing the edtech companies, why is 12% of budget is still spending on mainstream traditional education institution? Question remains. My second question is what is even the use of millions of contents when you cannot even engage a student to that particular content, Honorable Speaker? Honorable Monitor. Honorable Monitor, we believe that this type of, this is the dead Deadlocks of a particular education a tech companies, which is actually where its glorifies remains limited. Honorable Speaker, first of all, let me go to the, some basic rebuttals. They talked about honorable speaker, global collaboration. Honorable Speaker, MIT Open Courseware exists, Harvard X, Harvard ADX exists, but why are not students are actually getting online degree from there in COVID-19 in COVID-19 time or now? The fact is that honorable speaker, this cannot particularly engage that particular students just because that there are tons of distraction, and we saw how students actually engaging in different type of random YouTube contents and Instagram feeds rather than watching those MIT open course where courses on will speak on will monitor on will monitor they talked about flexibility as the second argument we believe flexibility comes with some particular costs which are procrastination and distractions we believe when suppose I'm a student and I'm enrolled in a particular edtech company courses we to my to my mind I, I came in to think that Oh my god, I can watch it in 10 a.m., I can watch it in the next day. So the fact is that it creates a sense of distraction and a sense of procrastination, which is not actually happening in a particular traditional education institution. Honestly, they talked about skill development, honestly. Honestly, extracurricular activities is actually prevailing or is actually exist existing in a particular mainstream educational institution. Honestly, the skill development they're talking about, when you are going to replace that particular skill development thing with ed tech companies, you cannot represent 10 minute school in such debate competitions, honestly. Speaker, not only the honorable speaker, they are talking about rich content. I don't have a point, or I don't even get it when you have some tons of multimedia rich content or animation even though you can actually basically engage those particular students not only the normal school they talked about that 10 mid school or shiko can update their contents with frequent frequently but the fact is that also we know that how they are actually binded or limited by the textbook itself honorable speaker honorable monitor honorable monitor they also talked about cost efficiency also are those poor family economically stable to provide a monthly wi-fi bill electricity bill and course fees they could have just sent their students in that particular in that particular free high school also moving on to the our argument we believe our third argument is how traditional institution offers a better utility than educational technology companies we talked about three age group Pre primary school or preschooler, high school and university students. First of all, moving on to the primary school, what is his demand? His demand is he needs a safe, hands-on and a practical nurturing environment. On how speaker, how, how a traditional education institution gets an upper hand in this particular criteria. First of all, on speaker, how a particular toddler or particular kid is actually going to learn. He actually learns by engaging in different type of play, playful activities like learning from alphabetical toys or interacting with teachers. Here education institution gets an upper hand by offering hands-on and play-based learning, by offering socialization skill and with teachers and peers. Thirdly, by offering emotional and physical development. Such growth mindset is basically not is not actually present in such type of ed, ed tech companies. Honorable we saw how many babies can't even talk just because they're over relied in the digital content. Honorable moderator. Honorable moderator. Not only the honorable moderator talking about the high schoolers. What are their basic demands? They need continuous accountability. They need proper attention, and they need they need their curiosity to get results. First of all, moving on to the accountability part. Also, when a teacher asks a student about a particular question, the next Next day after he taught about that lesson, the student has to actually answer that particular answer that particular question. It actually it actually represents the overall accountability and mon progress monetization or progress monitor monitoration of a, in a particular traditional institution. Also. Not only the normal speaker, such accountability is actually not present in case of 10 minute school because a student can even cheat from Google or chat GPT right now in particular tech companies. Not only the normal speaker, moving on to curiosity results. Also, when a student asks about a particular question to a teacher, a teacher rephrases it or helps him to make him comprehend in another way, which is actually absent in case of online ed tech companies because you have to chat and ask different type of questions which takes 24 hours or so much long time rather than on uh, rather than a traditional institution moving on to proper attention when a student is basically attentive in or inattentive in a traditional education institution as teacher instructs him to at to be attentive in that particular class which is absent which is only exclusive in our particular education traditional institution because on a sphere when you are getting distracted in the online world that teacher from the zoom class doesn't even know that you are attentive to that particular class or engaging in that particular class so we believe it is exclusive in high school arena too we saw how new curriculum actually focusing on practical workloads 
like which 10 minute school or shikho can actually replace on a speaker not only that also we fundamentally will believe how university students actually gets practical are practical more practical research and innovation from traditional institution rather than online classes so we firmly believe and we proudly oppose this motion now we are getting to the rebuttal round in this round first i am calling up on the stage shomitra singha team leader of the rani bilash government high school gajipur to put up his arguments for the motion thank you honorable moderator we are truly amazed amazed to see how the opposition team has spun a yarn that's larger than life to create a tapestry of exaggeration knife not bad they've answered none of our questions rather rhapsodize a toddler's anecdote so rise and shine honorable moderator shining chairs take my heart honorable moderator i asked the opposition team why edtech startups were burgeoning and thriving no answer there is nothing enigmatic about it this is simply because edtechs are replacing traditional educational institutions and thereby creating a revolution i even asked them why edtechs are more prevalent and recognized no answer here either say in south africa 48 from 8 100 students make it to high school 28 out of 48 students make it to mathematics and 10 out of 20 students passes the math exam and 4 out of 10 students get to 90% marks for the poor traditional education institutions so khan academy started the program numeric in south africa and guess what they became wildly successful why is it so question remains stem education science technology engineering and mathematics it's the most prevalent education system which is mostly organized by edtechs even the current us president joseph robinet biden junior acclaimed it as an utter significance source the new york times the opponents even claimed that internet was costly well behold dhaka tribune according to which bangladesh is the fifth cheapest country in, ter in terms of internet prices aminul islam a student of buet who came from a mere village said during corona pandemic had there been no educational institutions and edtechs i would not have been able to take extensive preparation source the prothamalo 11 november 2020 more importantly Bangladesh Open University BBC Janala are some of the noteworthy government initiatives taken by the government itself so who are we to oppose edtech renaissance when government itself is taking initiatives how are the 35 million digital nomads again helplessly hoping for the answers i'd like to conclude thank you honorable moderator panel of judges for listening to me thank you everyone uh, now i am calling up on the stage abra shohit the team leader of the Dr. Graham Cantonment Public College to put up his arguments against the motion. Thank you, Honorable Moderator, for giving the floor again. Honorable Moderator, there is a basic misconception of standpoints in this whole debate, Honorable Speaker. Today, Honorable Speaker, our main standpoint was we were to prove that edtech companies will actually enhance our curriculum or study course, but we believe that it cannot solely replace the traditional educational institution. Honorable Speaker, the fact is that they had no engagement on the deadlock part of the educational different type of education or. tech companies the fact is that they had no engagement on the distraction part they had no engagement on the addiction part they had no engagement what we saw on the covid-19 era rather we tried to basically had a basic rebuttal in their five major arguments or else the fact is that they had a question living about why is actually government enforcing right now uh, about different educational or tech companies the fact is that honorable speaker honorable moderator the fact is that still 12% of budget is actually spent on the mainstream educational institution the primary focus of the government is actually the mainstream education insti mainstream education institution the fact is that government enforcing on those tech companies just to enhance the curriculum just to enhance the study course just to get modern and just to get cope up with the vision 2041 we don't the government actually thinks or the government steps is actually representing that these things are going to enhance our particular study curriculum is going to enhance our particular tradi traditional education institution not to just replace it on our speak on our monitor on our monitor the fact is they they also had different questions about programming courses and different type of skill development issues the fact is on our speaker a student 
is actually getting introduced by a particular skill from his school in different type of extracurricular activity classes or in different type of competitions. You cannot actually represent Ten Mir School or Shikho in different type of debate competition or programming type of competition. The fact is that Ten Mir School and Shikho are limited to actually give information based content and uploading information based content. But the fact is that it cannot actually engage or it cannot ensure the engagement of that particular student. And it is the deadlock of the for the motion of the proposition team that the deadlock is the distraction or the engagement that uh, tech companies can provide. Honorable, honorable moderator, that's why we believe that traditional education institutions should not get replaced by those uh, tech companies and probably opposing the motion. Thank you, honorable. I have to convey my congratulations to the debaters of the both of the teams for your wonderful speech and arguments. And I sincerely believe the style of your arguments and the style of your delivering speech, it's really hope for our country, because you are the true fighter of our vision 2041 of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina. And I also convey my heartiest thanks and gratitude to the Honorable Adjudicators, and I sincerely believe this is a very hard job, but you have already done a great job to adjudicate of such a wonderful debate competition. We are all waiting for the result. Meanwhile, I am trying to put some comments. This is my individual comments, and I sincerely believe my comments will not affect the result of the debate competition. The, both the parties, they strongly put their arguments in favor of, of their proposition. Uh, the team belongs to Ford. They are uh, talking about, about the education and technology companies, and they sincerely believe due to lack of the teachers, due to the lack of the infrastructure, and due to lack of the uses of the technology-based education, and at the same time, the contents are not the updating of the textbooks, and at the same time, this is the cost-effective media. So they are talking about the, this is very effective that the educational technologies company can replace the traditional educational institute. On the other hand, the opposition, they put their arguments, they are not completely deny the importance of the education and technology companies, but they believe in our context of the Bangladesh, this is not practically feasible. And at the same time, they believe this technology-based education system cannot make a human being to a proper human human being. They, they have the lack of the socialization. And they're talking about the pandemic situation also. And when the teachers took the classes in the pandemic situations, the students at the same time, this is not practically feasible for a teacher to look after the, the each students. But they're talking about the importance of the in-house class or the physical class. There is a student has the opportunity to look after their students and at the same time their guidance and as well as the proper uh, guidance they will carry out their study in their life. So in the meantime I have got the result and this is my proud privilege to announce the result of the two days debate competition. The winning team is Chattogram Cantonment Public College. And the best speaker of the today's debate competition, Abra Shohit of Chattogram Cantonment Public College. Congratulations, Abra Shohit. And at the same time, congratulations to Rani Bilash Government High School, Gajipur, for the wonderful competition. And thanks, everyone.